Hello, dear friends. Welcome to another episode of Heart to Heart. It is my overwhelming joy to be bringing you today's guest. I have personally received a tremendous amount of value from this person's work. Um, I'm so excited for us all to get to learn more about her work and how she sees it progressing into the future, especially. Um, and just in general, what what brought it all together and how does one get on a path where they feel convicted that this is my life's work? I find that incredibly attractive when I find it in the world. People, no matter what they're doing, I don't really care what you're doing. If you have that sense of passion and knowing inside of it, it it speaks to me on a level where I want more of that in my own life. And around my channel, I do tend to attract other people who are on a similar unfolding and unfurling journey that just, it's so incremental and it's so step-by-step. Step and I'm so excited to get into this. So welcome, Denise Matthew. Thank you so much for joining us. So glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. Oh, gosh. I'm so excited to get straight into this. And I have to tell the audience, whoever's watching, that this is Denise's and I's first time meeting on Zoom. So if I seem like an awkward fangirl, that's because I probably that's showing through a little bit. But I'll I'll find my groove here. Um so it's so exciting, though, to get you guys, everybody watching in on the ground floor of us getting to know each other, because as I have watched your content over the course of the last like year, year and a half thereabouts, um, I have like gotten so many glimpses of what's inside of your mind and what's coming through your intuition. And the reason that you stand out to me specifically is because so often it sounds so similar to what I'm downloading like directly through my intuition. And then the next day, here's your video saying like the same exact thing. So really like in typical Carly fashion, I'm going to dive right into the deep end with like getting to know you, just skip past all the, the details and get right into like, how do you see, how do you understand like, what is your life's work? What is your mission upon this planet? Like, what is your life doing what's the purpose of your human well I mean I think if you you know it took me years to figure it out so uh, you know uh, you've got lots of time yeah I never have to worry that you're behind schedule because you aren't um the universe is always pushing us and and sort of letting us flow with it and um I think that the biggest thing that I had to do was to let go because with me, it was always, I have the gate 21, which is all about control and it is in my Saturn. So it's my biggest lesson. And um, for me, it was like, I would go, oh yeah, let, let, let go and let the world. Um, but I always had to have my hand on the steering wheel and a backup plan. If, if the universe didn't come through, I needed a backup plan. And so that was sort of my mantra and I would just go through. And, and so I, I've had a lot of different things that I've done. I was, um, uh, I have an open identity. So it means, and only one gate, only the gate 13, which is, you know, really it's quite open. Um, and I went through a lot of different things. And in the beginning, I uh, went into nursing. I did pedi pediatric nursing for about 11 years. Um, then I, uh, we moved to a, another, uh, part of Canada. So then when we did that, um, I was sort of at home with my three kids and I, I said, Oh, I have to figure out something. So I started to write books so I wrote books and, um, and I published a few, they're on Amazon now. And I sort of, that was not something that was going anywhere. Or I didn't feel it was going anywhere. And then I opened my online jewelry store and that's what I did with that. Then I eventually, I, um, uh, started a YouTube channel. I have another YouTube, YouTube channel other than the HD. I started that and, uh, several years ago. And then in 2014, I, um, a friend of mine came to me and said, um, you know, I went to this, I guess it was a psychic fair or something like that. And, and said, well, I went to the psychic fair and, and there was this person and they were talking about astrology. It, well, kind of astrology. It was in there somewhere. And it really sounded like something you would like, because I know you love astrology. Cause I, I, I've been studying astrology as a hobby for, you know, quite a few years at that point. Um, because I always just wanted to know more, you know, I just wanted to know more. Um, anyhow, uh, they said, she said, uh, you know, 
you should check them out. So I checked out the website of that particular individual. And frankly, it was not anything overwhelmingly interesting to me. And I thought, oh, well, that's kind of boring. But because I'm very, you know, obsessed about, you know, I have this nugget of something, I have to find out more information about it. I did. And I, and I, I found Karen Curry Parker. <clears throat> and, and I mean, after that, it was just literally a whirlwind of going through every single course that she ever had ever, um, you know, put out there. And within, I don't know, but a year had gone through all the courses. Now that was 2014 and I'm going into almost nine years now and um, I haven't lost anything. In the beginning, it was just sort of something to find out, to discover, to, to interest me. As the d years went on, um, I started to uh, like, I I'd sort of, you know, I, I'll be honest, I was kind of, um, when I finished with all those courses, I was kind of a little bit, bit all up in myself thinking, oh, I know everything about human design now, you know, I, I, I'm the one. And, um, and then um, I started looking at the actual, um, the source work, which I feel like is, for me, has been so profound. And that was going through um, all Ra's work. And a lot of people don't like his personality, um, you know, who he was and, and, and that type of thing. But what I look at is, I, you know, in a lot of ways, he he actually had done some, you know, oddly, he had done some conferences and it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been very far for me to go to these conferences had I known even about human design. But at that point, um, I wasn't in it. And um, and also uh, he had passed away by the time I actually got into it. So I never knew him as a man, but I know his work. And I don't think that um, I think that was a benefit to me because there is no kind of connection with oh, he was not this, or he was that, or he was whatever. For me, it is it is this embodiment of, of messages that are so profound and so um, gives you the chills. And here I am almost nine years in and still feel the same. And it has changed me in more ways than I can, I can um, describe. So that is sort of, in a, in a nutshell, my journey to this moment. How I got to this moment was... Um, you know, starting a YouTube channel, because I felt like that was what I needed to do to talk about this work. And then, you know, things just kind of unfolded, exactly as you say, it's it is about unfolding, it is about flowing with it and allowing the universe to show you the way I started the mandala of life. Um, and when I was started, when I did that, I, I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to go through all the transits of, of how all the planets are working and what gates are in and, and, um, you know, so I found the Ravi Chang, which is very, it's a very, it's a very sparse book, um, but it very much can like lead to so many interpretations that it's, to me, it's like a gold book for me. Everything that I, um, I look at, you know, I look at it and it's just intensely profound what you can find. And of course, there's always going to be intuition that comes with all this because, you know, we're all, we've all been gifted with um, the ability to tap into more if we need to and and i think that right when i started it there were very few people you know who were actually doing it but now it seems to have exploded in popularity and it's interesting and everybody's got their like little way of interpreting it and i think that's really cool because you know we all have it's just we're we're opening up new facets of it and it doesn't have to be you know only the work that was delivered and i think that um the one thing that troubles me is when I hear people go uh you know when Ra got his his work uh, and you know later on he came out with this part and that wasn't part of his original download and I thought well so what I mean the end of the day we are always receiving more and we are you know we are given this diamond in the rough and we have to bring out the facets we have to make it spark sparkle and shine and sort of that's what I'm trying to do with my work but in a way where people feel empowered you know, you wake up in the morning and you feel a certain way and you go and and it's not always going to be a transit. I mean, that's just part of life. I mean, it, it, it won't always be a transit, but sometimes it is. And sometimes it is so impactful when you look and you go, oh, that's why this is happening. Oh, that's why they're acting like this. Or that's why, you know, I'm, you know, feeling this way. And it kind of brings you into this um, point of clarity where you stop and you go, yeah, OK, Th there is more that I can tap into I do have more access to information that can really help me in this life because humanity and living a human life is not always easy we know we stumble we fall we stand up again and we keep keep going and, and that's what it's about 
and there are moments of joy and there are moments of pain and there are moments of every kind. Um, but this helps you maneuver and traverse the highway of life in a way where you feel empowered and inspired to keep getting up every day and keep doing it again. Not all the time, but you know, we hope 90% at least. Sure. So that, that's, that's my story. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I can, that's what I'm attesting to is that like, especially your daily, like the transit posts that you do on your community tab every day the videos have all of that same good information too. But every morning, pretty much I read through that and I see my life through a completely different lens of it's not personal. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm pretty blue today. Well, there's all this individual energy or, you know, whatever it is that you're speaking about that like lets me soften up on mm-hmm. myself. Like you also spoke to empowerment. Like can you speak a little bit more to like the intention behind the impact that you want your work to have? Like you're also a line six you shared with me, like in your profile. Like, do you see it that way that? you're creating an impact or is it more no, the no. work itself? It's work. And and if it impacts you, that makes me feel good. But I know that the only way that this energy that, you know, of human design is going to come through me is, is, is going to come through me in the way that I want to express it. As soon as I try and sort of make it a certain way and sort of, I guess, try to inspire people or try to do something to make someone else feel something i lose i lose the threat because it's not about authenticity anymore then it's about um trying to do or be something that that is maybe authentic but maybe not so for me it's a flow it it, it flows through me it's it's when i pick when i pick the quotes i look at the quote and i like it and and I that feels good. And then sometimes in the back of my mind, I'll say, yeah, people might like that one, but it's not the most important part of it. For me, it is I like it. And so I'm going to express myself. So basically, I'm expressing myself through my work. And if people like that, I'm very happy with it. Mm-hmm. The one thing I don't ever want to do is put anything out there that's going to make somebody feel negative or sad or disempowered. That is a conscious effort that I will make because I feel like, you know, there's enough of that out there. We don't need more. Um, We want to feel like, you know, if something makes you feel uncomfortable or unhappy or, or you feel like you're being targeted by the words, well, then, you know, I like if people comment about that and, 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 you know, what did you mean by that? Well, maybe they're taking it in a way that it was not intended to be taken and so my intention is never to harm. It is only to to um, to flow with my energy. And if that aligns with people, absolutely. There, there are people who like me and there are people who don't. And that's okay. And I think that that's the biggest thing to to let go of this idea that you need to be liked. If you're not liked, you're it's okay. Um, because a lot of times what we do is if people don't like us, we put all our focus into trying to get that person to like us or to whatever, especially with an open identity. I mean, that's part of it, right? this, this feel of, of, uh, wanting to have that love. Um, but not everybody's for you and that's okay. And I like that. Um, even, especially with human design, it it does describe the idea of fractals. Uh, There are fractals that, that you have, and, um, there are people who will get your work, who understand your work and people who, who don't, you know, and the funny part is, is that for the most part, I feel like, um, uh, my community play- page is my home and I'm inviting people into my home. It- it's a weird thing. And I had that, it was, it was really weird because I had that energy today. Somebody um, made a very uh, sort of dramatic comment about like, this was not real or something like that. And, um, and it felt like it was the first person that came into my home and was kind of disruptive. Although there have been other people who've been disruptive, you know, you could say, but, but, you know, I don't care. Um, if you're having a bad day and you and you feel like you need to express yourself in a way that you know is is probably not very positive that's okay because you know we have duality in life this is this is the world we live in there is no um utopian universe and and frankly to me utopia is boring i mean i feel like we need to have something to push against um so what i am saying is that it is like i'm inviting everybody into my my um my my community but also my almost like my home and and um 
and we can have a discussion and people put a lot of information about their lives and what's happening in their lives um in the community page and and i feel that that's you know a privilege for me to be able to interact with people to allow them to to voice and maybe that's the only person that they can speak allowed to you know what i mean like the only person that they can make a comment to and so for me that feels really amazing and um again the whole point of this community the whole part of this community that is so uh cool to me is that it was very very organic it was never anything i intended to create it just created itself that 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 to me is the coolest part of it yeah like through your own enjoyment you know, like, I like absolutely. This. Here's this piece. Oh, absolutely. Of- absolutely. Absolutely. And that is a six line process. It is like, so if you want to look at the fifth line process and the six line process, you look at the fifth line as, and that could be any fifth line you have anywhere in your whole body graph. The fifth line is where you actively you're teaching somebody something you're saying, okay, so if you want to, okay, let's say we're br- building a brick, a brick house or something like that. When you build a brick house, you need to put the paste on and then you put the bl- bricks and you have to line them up this way. And that's how you build it. Now, when you are six line, you, you will build the brick house, but you're going to just do it. And somebody comes around and says, oh, what are you doing? Well, I'm just building this brick brick house. You want to, you want to, you know, be a part of it? Sure. And so you're doing your work and that person is aligning with you. They're being with you, but you're not telling them what they should do and how they should think. They're just looking at what you're doing. And sometimes they're participating with what you're doing. And that's, a, that is a path of the sixth line. It is to teach by being you. And, and I think that, um, it can be really complicated when you when you think about oh what's my big job as a six line role role model but the other part of it it's not complicated you just have to be yourself and so yeah that takes time but ultimately the end of the day uh we all get there it's just a maturity thing and it's just about you know letting go letting go and letting the universe show you because we are karmically you know we are karmically um aligned to our path especially with any left angle left angle profiles right yeah oh my gosh well and like you've said multiple times now letting go and I feel like that's like poking at something that has been like wiggling up into my consciousness um that yeah I suck at that too I'm real held on at Mm -hmm. a lot of times and I've I've noticed um a lot of worry that like I've become consciously aware of where like it's Mm -hmm. like obsessive and incessant worry that I just did for so long like up until these last couple weeks I've been consciously aware of how often I'm worrying aka like holding on aka not letting go like so Mm -hmm. many details that I feel like I gotta be attached and Mm-hmm. Just kind of even these last couple of weeks of getting some distance. It's, it's so, it's such a process. Like letting go mm-hmm. sounds so simple. And yet like that might be the most incremental of all. Can you speak to like, what were the increments or have you always been more of like, people are going to do what they do and I'm going to be me. Like has authenticity kind of no. been at the core <laughs> <laughs> how, how no people are you? gonna do <laughs> no um uh authenticity has always been my core i basically um that is true i mean i uh my my mother used to say uh why wasn't i more like my brothers because i would be very articulate about things that i didn't like i would be very articulate about things that that uh were just not gonna fly and i was basically never going to be pushed over to uh, align with with uh, the mode that that was um you know given to me and it was always reasonable it wasn't trying to be unreasonable um but probably when i was a teenager i probably was unreasonable who knows but you know ultimately it's always been about authenticity it's been about being who who i am and it is about um uh, you know getting burnt sometimes because you know it, you basically do tell people the truth you know like growing up it was about my brothers didn't really say things about, um, you know, things that they didn't like that, you know, we were happening in the family, but I was very, very clear about the things I did and didn't like. And, and so as I got older, that became 
basically a gift that that my mother always you know she says now it, it is a gift because you actually do tell me you know if you're upset with me or if you're um uh, if I've done something to upset you or something like that you don't have to worry like if you have irritated me I'll I'll basically let you know and I think that's that's a kindness to me to do that because to go around brooding and feeling angry and and upset because somebody did or said something um if you can change that why won't you because why would you want to keep that inside of you so for me it's always been about being very expressive the control part I think has been um, from a place of, again, caring where you hope that somebody doesn't fall and break their, their, um, you know, the, their knee or, you know what I mean? Like somebody's trying to learn how to bike my kids, right. You know, they, they had to learn how to ride a bike or, or, or anything like that. I mean, I remember when they went to swimming lessons, just being so terrified. And <laughs> every time they went underneath the water, I wanted to jump in the pool and make sure they were okay. I mean, that's a gate 27, 20, I got the whole defense circuit. Um, but having said that, you know, a lot of times it'd be like very un unintentional control about this idea that you want to smooth the path for them, or you want to help them along. It always came from a, po a place of caring, but people have to be able to make their own mistakes. And that is the biggest lesson that I learned. And you want to coddle them and you want to protect them and you want them not to have those pains of the real world out there, but they will get it no matter what. And, um, and I, I remember when my youngest son, I dropped him off at JK um, many years ago. And, uh, and I remember I was going to give him a kiss goodbye. And I did the first day, the second day, he said, don't do that because those guys are making fun of me because your mother's kissing you goodbye. So that was a real world that literally came crashing down in front of me because when they're home, you can protect them. You can, you know, so for me, the control has been about um, really surrendering to the idea of letting the universe show me the path. Um, and really, if you have the gate 55, you, yeah, you got to, because Every time you try and hold on to the way you want things to unfold is the time that it doesn't unfold that way. And um, I think especially for um, uh, anything like <laughs> the gate 36 as well, I, I'm I, I'm dealing with that with the gate 35. I have a hang, hanging gate 35 and Neptune has been giving me a full channel of uh, experiential energy. Uh, well, basically for a while and it will be for a while in the future. Um but that again is another, it, it is one more lesson, another layer of lessons that say, okay, if you think you're going to get this, I uh, think again, it's not going to happen the way you think it will. Now that could work out in a way where you get what you consider a positive result, or you get what you consider a not so positive result. So, so ultimately it is about aligning with what the universe gives you and saying, okay, that's, that's what it is. And, um, and just letting go. And I, and I know that I say letting go a lot, um, but it's even something that I'll use in a conversation. Like if I'm having a conversation with somebody and they want to argue with me and I just don't feel it's worth my time, I'll just say I'm letting go. And they understand that. So they let go too. I think there are moments in conversations where nobody's getting ahead and nobody's really getting their point across. And all you need is a cooling off moment where you can just kind of get clear and then come back and talk about it again. And that's those moments of, as I say, I'm letting go. And, and you just move away. And, and, and you know, that is uh, something that I've, I've uh, learned over the years, uh, letting go of control, allowing my children to do what they need to do, because they're going to anyways, it's a big, it's a big wide world out there. And they, they have every right to experience what they're, you know, meant to experience, just like I do, like, just like I did it and do in the future. And, um, and, you know, just being really clear about, um, autonomy too it, that is that is a big key too. this idea of um uh i think that sometimes relationships um and i and I, i'm not saying this from personal experience because i have always been very um sort of my own person within my relationship uh, i've been married for 24 years so it's it's worked so far um so anyhow <laughs> uh but you know, it, it is, uh, I'm married to a, a six line individual too. And we, um, 
uh, we are both single definitions. So we have our own independence and we're very respectful of our, our independence, but we also come together at the same time. So it really works well. But what I see a lot of happening is people assimilating themselves into a relationship so, relationship so much where they completely get lost and they don't know who they are anymore. And suddenly it's like, it's like you wake up one day and you realize, oh my gosh, where am I? Where, where is me? And, and then that is what human design brings us back to. It's like, keep that me, keep your own authority, keep that who you are, um, no matter what you can be in a relationship, but always be yourself. And if there are things that, that, you know, um, that person that you were in a relationship don't like, well, you know, that's just part of life. Unless it's something that you you could probably work on and, and maybe it's something that you don't like that you do anyways, or I don't know, some, something that you, maybe you like leave your clothes all over the place. Well, yeah, that you could work on that. I mean, that's that's reasonable. But if it's something that comes to the core of who you are, this is who I am. If I always cry at, you know, um, sad stories and you think stopping it, someone says stopping a baby, um, that shouldn't change. You know what I mean? Like that's never happened to me, but I'm just giving a sort of an extreme example. So, so that's the, the control incrementally, I would just say it just flowed through and it just kind of kept getting a little bit less. And um, before you know it, you sort of get to the other point. Now it doesn't mean that it doesn't come up every once in a while. I mean, this is part of life. Um, We're always going to fall back into our little ways of wanting to protect and, uh, for me, it's always about protecting. And, uh, but then sometimes, you know, you harm by, by holding too tight. So that's the key. Oh my gosh. Story of my life. Um, I'm a life path six. And one of the downsides is that you can smother mother onto the things that you love and then you suffocate the life right out of them. And I definitely resonate with that. I resonate with lots of things that you just said. Um, inner authority was a big one for me too. And I wonder Mm -hmm. if you might talk a little bit more about that and like what that was like to be able to understand this language of inner authority and like your unique inner authority and how it works. Um, That was such a massive permission slip again for me Mm -hmm. to take my time with my emotional authority. But like, what was that like for you, that specific piece? Well, I think that a lot of it was um, rushing ahead on an idea or a thought and um, and getting myself into something and realizing, oh, well, maybe I really don't want to do this, but then feeling committed. And, um, you know, the one thing is, is that when I commit to something, I really, you know, now I'm a little bit more reasonable about not actually committing all the way because I do have an open will center. And I think that... Um, putting all my, you know, intention, intentions are perfectly fine. And that's what I like to do. I like to intend to do things. Uh, As soon as you're committing, then you're really kind of putting the pressure on to come through. But again, even things as simple as um, letting me kind of sit with energy before I respond to something, even comments, like if I find that I get a comment that I find a little, you know, a little dodgy, I'll take my time with it. Because I, I mean, I know that my initial, con- my initial response might be one thing, but then if I give it 24 hours, I, I have completely different perspective. So, I mean, I think that just knowing how your emotional wave, now I don't have a big emotional wave in that it isn't so um, impactful, but I still know that it's my authority. So it's still there. So I am honoring it no matter what, Um, you know, so I don't have any, any uh, big diversions, uh, you know, highs and lows. But having said that, as soon as we're hooking into other people's auras, like I live in a family and there's five of us, um, I have, we have pretty much every emotional wave in the house. So obviously I'm tapping into every single one of them at, at some point in the day. Um, but ultimately, yes, the emotional authority, I found I was just jumping in too many times, being unhappy with the outcome, um, having these ideas of how things are going to work out and things just not working out the way I want it to being disappointed. And I think, uh, uh when I did, uh, find human design or human design found me. And when I did it, uh, in, in 2014, I feel like, um, I was at a point where 
I was like so tired. I actually, I think I just, I'd sort of gone through, I would say, a form of depression for almost a year before that. But again, it was a very, um, I would say, a, a type of depression that I could uh, work through, you know, without um, uh, really, I, I, I did a lot of healing, I could say, and it was a lot of self-healing and I felt like I could do it on my own. Um, but yeah, because depression is a big word, but I, I do feel I was, um, it was after I had, uh, my books, they didn't do as well as I wanted them to do. And I think that that was to me sort of where I hit the brick wall of the gate 55, where it said, okay, you have to let go. You have to just let go. And, and what is yours will come to you. And the rest of it isn't yours. And um, it took me, as I say, and, and and I guess maybe it wasn't a depression. Maybe it was a realization of the truth of the reality of life, that life is about um, just being open to what you receive because you will miss the the most important. You will miss things sometimes. It, they usually come back if they're meant to be. I mean, that's kind of, I think, how life is. But I think you will miss things if you're always looking for only one thing, you know, and, and, and you can have a sort of amount of success, but how much do you need? And, you know, it, it, it can even go down as, 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 um, as simple as your uh, signature, for instance. Um, you know, like for me, I have two, I have the, the, the peace or anger and also the frustration and satisfaction. So, I mean, I, what brings you peace? If, if that is your, if that is your, um, your signature what brings you peace and and i mean you know it is this idea of people giving up you've heard of people you know being in the corporate world and 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 leaving the corporate world and saying i need to feel peace i need to be in a place where i feel good and uh, people don't understand that but that is what you feel you just feel like i need to feel that peace i need to feel satisfied mm -hmm. and what does satisfaction look like to you and if you're you know somebody else you could be what is what does success mean to me and if I'm not successful what does bitterness feel like and of course with surprise and um you know with with the reflector and disappointment um so if you look at something as simple as that you kind of look at your life and you go do I feel peaceful or do I feel satisfied or do I feel successful or or um surprised by life or you know, is it not the way it is? And if it isn't, what can I do to shift it? You know, because we have one life to live. And and I think that it's like, you want to get everything you can, can from it. Like everything that is meant to come to you, why don't we just try and embrace it and just move into, you know, into a better tomorrow, I guess, you know, to be cliche. But, you know, it, it really is like, um, there's so much sadness and grief and pain in the world and I just think that sometimes if you just kind of looked at yourself and said you're you're good you're all right you know and you don't have to look like that or you don't have to be like that you can just be you and the right people for you will show up and and because as soon as we have this gloomy kind of atmosphere around us it really does repel people it does really push them away and it's not even something you want to do, but it can do that. So finding that signature of what feels good to you, you know, for whoever we are, um, really does, I think, just lighten our load. And it does bring the right people to us because we are just having this more uh, cleanness about us, you know, like more clarity and more like not a fog, a fog around us. Like inner aura, like so that it's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Clear. Just a clean, clean kind of. Yeah, you know, you, you know, when you meet somebody and they just have this energy about them and it just makes you feel good. Well, that's because they have an inner happiness, yeah. right? And 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 it's just coming out of them. And they're not trying to make you feel happy. It's just that energy, that aura that just kind of brings it to you. And and I think that we can have more people like that in the world. And even if if you are in a place where you're the only person that feels that energy and you're feeling like I'm feeling good today. Um, you just bring up the energy in the room and alternatively you can do the same if you're having a bad day and you go out and you just bring your energy to the, to the room. So we have so much power 
Um, and I think that a lot of times we think our hands are small and we can't do much, but there are something, right? There's there's something that we can give. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I'm so glad that this came around to Auras because one of the questions that I have like wanted to ask you the whole time, one of my main human design questions is about manifestors and their mm -hmm. repelling aura. This concept mm -hmm. that the manifestor aura repels. And I've yeah, I've so, talked so, with it a lot, but I would love, yeah, any any deep dive into that. So how does that make you feel when you hear that repelling aura? It makes a lot of sense. Um, it definitely yeah. it, it may honestly, it makes me feel better that like, no, I wanted it to be this way, where mm -hmm. I rub so many people the wrong way and that's gotten a mm -hmm. lot better as my inner happiness comes up but I still I still think most people find me intimidating or unapproachable like in my physical everyday life like I do a good job of keeping most people like on the outside um and I've also like really come to be grateful for like this, this sounds terrible, but like, what if those things that it's repelling were only going to get in the way of me doing my very important work on this planet? So what if that's like a, that's a good perspective, freaking snow shovel to like clear out of the way? Like what is not helping me to go where I need to go? And so, but it's lonely on the inside. And so that's the part mm -hmm. that like before human design, I felt like I'm just not a likable person. And then this little realization was like, oh, no, I have a repelling aura. <laughs> like, that's what it's called. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, what do you think it's for or how does it work or any of that? Well, well, for me, like I look at the repelling aura, and I just first of all, I mean, I think the, the, the most important thing to always learn about human design is that even when we look at um, the lines of the hexagrams and, and the names and the words, I mean, you know, they were, they were made to be shocking. They were made to be provocative. They were made to really sort of get into your um, energy. So you kind of would, would, would feel something. And, um, but if most of the words that you look at and you can bring something else out of it, that is not as intense and repelling is a very intense word. And, and I, and I, and, that's the one thing that you look at because you see a repelling uh, aura and, and for a generator aura, a generator aura is, is enveloping. So when a generator is out in the world, they're, they're sort of taking everything in. It's not always good. Uh, you know, um, Ra Ruhu, who was a manifester said, you know, if a manifester and a generator go out shopping, the manifester comes out with their bags of groceries. The generator comes out with their bags of groceries and all the problems of everyone they met that day. So, yes, you are correct. It is a lot because generators are pulling all this energy into themselves, whereas as a manifester, you can you can sort of not be a part of that. And it does give you that uh, that ability to do your work, because if you think of the purpose of your work is to initiate people into, you know, whatever it is, you are here to initiate people, you are here to get them started on their path. So think about that perspective. If you're always being inundated by all this ener energy that's kind of coming in it at all the time, it is true. How can how can you think clearly? How can you sort of and, and think about um, the manifesting, uh, you know, the whole aura of what is your authority? Well, your authority is to go at with your own, you know, with your own machinations of what you need to do. So I look at this as um, the repelling needed to be um, needs to be the way it is because it encases you. And it's almost like you see this beam of light coming down sort of into your cr crown chakra that is like the divine speaking to you and saying, okay, this is where you need to go. This is what you need to do. And we don't need any static. I just need to have a clear connection with you so that we can do what we need to do on planet earth. So that's what I feel like about a manifesting a manifestor order. Oh my gosh. And like, that feels so good. 
that feels like like yeah I didn't I didn't want the static I wanted the clear connection with something else and for you know the first 30 some years of my life I was looking for the connection with the other which like outside of myself like another person and Mm -hmm. that is you know typically very staticky to use that word like it's incredibly Mm -hmm turbulent to Mm. make a connection with another person my primary relationship but like transitioning in my spiritual work to this inner relationship has made me a lot more grateful for the way that I do just kind of like tune out the rest of the world like do they exist are we sure are we sure there's other people out there because I don't I don't I don't know I feel like I'm kind of on the world by myself sometimes And I think that that is a process. And I think that is exactly correct. But, you know, where the trouble rolls in is when you don't have a spiritual practice and you don't have a connection and and you have this nothing, it feels like, because you don't have anything to connect with. You don't have anything to say, okay, this is my purpose. And yes, I can take people into my energy if I want to, but I don't have to. If it doesn't feel good for me, I don't have to do it. And you know, if you don't have that connection for anybody who doesn't have a spiritual connection, because, you know, as manifestor type, you need to have that. Because if you don't have that, you you just, where's the direction, you know, especially w- the only thing that will slow down. And, and if you have an emotional wave, at least that is one thing that's sort of slowing you down to, you know, give you time to make your uh, decisions. But if you don't even have an emotional wave, imagine you're just out doing <laughs> and, and really you know how does that look not necessarily the way it could so if you look at the big the the power and the energy that is is potential within within um you know who you are and what you can give to the world and and it's being muddied by so much other stuff it really is essential to be in that enclosed protected space and and I, and I do feel like, of course, you can bring people into your space if you want to, but it has to be on your terms at, and it has to be for the amount of time that you want to do it. Yeah. And then when it's no longer what you want, then it isn't what you want. And, and you know, a single definition is, is a big deal, too. As soon as you're a single definition, you're already in a position where a relationship is nice, but it's not needed. And that might sound cruel and cold. But that's, but that's true. And, you know, it is something you want to be in. It's not something that you need to be in. And that is a difference. It really is a big deal um, when you have um, uh, like a manifester or a manifesting generator with a single definition, because it is that you are in a position where you don't actually feel you need other people. Um, you like to be with other people, you enjoy being with other people, you like to socialize or whatever you want to do on your own terms. But it's not that, that, oh my gosh, I can't live unless I have A, B, and C, you know, that type of whatever, yeah. you know, as they say nowadays, goals, relationship goals, goals which yeah. I hate. I'm sorry. I hate it so much. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's, just wrong on a multitude of ways i mean the only goal we should have is to be a goal to be ourselves and and to be happy with who we are and uh and i think all this other stuff is why would why would we ever want to be anybody else you know like we're all so unique yeah sorry i i want to get this turned off because for some reason i have a multitude of irritations that are driving me crazy <laughs> so oh my god just turn this uh while we have this a little moment what is machinations what does that mean? machinations is it's it's like um uh your ideas of things that you want to make happen in your world uh machinations are um i love it like a concept that you want to like i have machinations i have ideas concepts something that i want to bring into uh into the world oh my god so oh i definitely got those in spades bunch of yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and you do and you do and i and i mean it all goes back to you know look back at your um your uh, incarnation cross that helps mm. um and i think that there are people who do incarnation cross readings 
And I think they're all great and well, but I think that uh, the best reading that you can get is from yourself. Uh, and I think uh, just looking at each particular gate that you have um, in those four top gates, and of course you can always bring your moon in later on, but I would look at each four gates and, and really sit with the energy and and see it in through your through your own life. Now, we never want to be something because it says that's who we are in our chart, you know, so-called. But uh, I, I, I'm certain that a lot of these energies, you can see the themes play out in your life just naturally. Yeah. So you just sit with the energy. And, and I think that when you do that, the more you sit with the energy of each particular gate, like just take some time with each particular gate, it will give you more clarity on, on what it all means for you. And it took me, uh, I mean, I had... Um, I remember Karen, uh, Karen Parker, she did um, like these little sort of five minute incarnation cross readings and she, um, she did one for me and I just like, oh, that doesn't, oh, it's like, it feels uncomfortable and it's nothing against her. It was just, it's, it, I, it, it's like a journey that you have to take on your own. I don't think anybody can really give it to you in a way. Well, they couldn't give it to me. Maybe the, maybe people can feel like relieved by, oh, you told me I, I'm going to do this and this and this and that that feels good for you. But for me, it just didn't feel like it was. And a lot of it for me, because I have the uh, the 59, um, the 59, six, which is lovely, the one night stand. And uh, I, I have such a laugh because somebody once said to me, they said, well, my husband has the one night stand, you know, and he's been with so many different women. And, you know, is that what happens when you have the one night stand? And I was like. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's not what it's about. Um, you know, it is the one night stand, but why is it the one night stand? We look at it from the perspective of you, you figure out really quickly on your third line stage, who you like and who you don't like, what relationships you want to be in and how do you do that? Well, you experiment with a lot of different relationships in the end it comes it comes to the point where it's the ultimate relationship it's a relationship that goes beyond boundaries right um that breaks all barriers and then you can even look at it as it always being about breaking barriers and it's no longer a sexual relationship so that is one of the energies like the gate, gate 59 like a lot of times um it really is uh, a lot of people just talk about it as being just very sexual, just very, oh, let's just, you know, go off and, you know, do our thing and whatever. And, and sure, that's part of it. I mean, it's part of life, but it isn't the whole part of it. And I think one of the coolest things that I saw was um, there was a movie um, based on the true stories of, um, what was it? It was these women that were doing things for NASA. And I think there were hidden figures. I think that's what they were called. The, the show was called. The movie was called. It was based on these women. And one of the women was, um, she was a woman who had, uh, I think she was a sleeping, uh, I, I could be, but Cross of the Sleeping Phoenix. And uh, I was like looking at her chart. I was like, oh my gosh, she was breaking barriers. And I was like, it felt so empowering because it isn't just about breaking sexual barriers. It is about breaking barriers in the world. And that's what I feel like my work is doing it's breaking barriers. It's, it's allowing people to have access to information that they normally wouldn't have access to. So that is part of my life purpose. I mean, I, I, I can see my life purpose based on, um, you know, my, my incarnation cross. I mean, I can see it. Um, and I think one of the coolest things for me was when I was younger, um, I'm doing a lot of the me show today. So just stop me anytime. I Cause no, I'm talking I love a lot it. about myself. I watch, well, I watch your <laughs> um, content, which is almost always like the transits and the energy. And this yeah. is what I'm curious about. Like, I want to know your, your person. So I love it. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> no um, problem. <laughs> um, the gate nine is, uh, so is in my incarnation cross and, um, and I'm terrible, but I always forget if it's in my sun or my earth, but it's in one of my design sites. Uh, it's in the second line. But the one thing was when I was a kid, I really loved this this one uh, proverb. And it was like the journey of a, a, a thousand miles begins with one step. It really like impacted me. And I, I basically just always said, you know, just start, just start. You know, you don't know where things are going to go. Just start. And um, when I when I um, uh, got into human design, that was one of the things about the gate nine that Ra Uru said. 
it, it was like the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, that actual proverb. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is so crazy. You know, and, and it was, it was like prophetic when you think about it, because it was something that, you know, and so what it was, was a link and a click that said, oh yeah, this is correct. And funny enough, I told you there was like an, an interesting story. Um, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years. I had this, my mom had a friend who was a psychic and I used to like have fun with, you know, going to psychics every once in a while, you know, uh, you know, what, what, what was my life going to be like and all this kind of stuff. So she told me this one time, she said, I see you working with a medicine wheel. She said, and you know, it, and, and people like this medicine wheel and you're going to teach people about this medicine wheel you're going to be a teacher of this medicine wheel and I said oh, I'm not going to be a teacher <laughs> that's not that's not my um, style and um, and when I saw the mandala later on like I would say probably 15 years later um, I was like oh my gosh this was it this is what she was telling me about she called it a medicine wheel she wouldn't have known what a, you know an actual mandala was but a medicine wheel looks very much like a mandala and I thought, well, that's really cool. So it was like, again, this kind of um, leading me, a thread leading me to today in this moment. And um, that's why I always say I don't have any regrets about anything in life because every single thing that happened, mistakes and all, if we want to call them, or you know, experimentations that didn't work out the way you want it to, um, they all led me to this very moment. And and that's, you know, that is the gift to to actually get all the, the pieces slowly clicking into place and just kind of getting those clear, clarity, um, uh, clear moments of, of actually knowing, yeah, this is it. This is really where I'm meant to be. So I love the, the examples of the puzzle pieces or like the half of the picture that you got like decades ago. And yeah. then here's this other piece that like, oh my God, this is exactly where this whole thing was headed. Um, oh, so cool. I feel like, you know, maybe everybody's journey is something like that. Like there's like those Easter eggs that we hid way back there that we didn't really know what it was going to be. Like how funny that you would say, oh no, I'm not going to be a teacher. Like you're such a natural teacher. Like I love your style. One of the things I have to say that I, I think is kind of funny, um, one of my favorite things about you is how fast you talk, how fast <laughs> yeah. you're capable of talking. <laughs> I think it's yeah. awesome. Some and people I, hate it, though. <laughs> I know. I've heard you in a couple of videos, like teaching people how to use YouTube to slow down the speed of the video. And I'm like, no, this is perfect. <laughs> the exact right speed. So, yeah, I, I dig. And same around my channel like a lot of people have really have a heavy Gemini energy and so again I feel like is that like that's kind of part of can they hear you or not and like are they meant to hear you or not you know yeah. like all of that I I that's been part of me letting go of the impact that my work has you know, like separating the work from the impact. And are you creating the work or are you trying to create the impact? Because I often find myself mm -hmm. trying to orchestrate certain impacts, again, often from the protective place of mm -hmm. wanting to shield people from their hard things. And yeah, but yeah, like when people don't resonate or can't hear me or I'm talking and they're like, wait, what did you say? I didn't get any of that. It's like, isn't that like a blessing in some parts or like, how do you see that? Like when they, when they can't hear you and they're like, you talk too fast or, you know, like you said, you should slow down or you should stop crying in movies. Like, well, I, I mean, I, I just look at it as um, like, because there are all people on, I, I, I get these people that go, that's all wrong. It's all garbage. And I, and I laugh, I laugh because I go, yeah, cool. It is garbage to you. It's okay though. Um, if you don't like, if you, if you like human design, I'll talk your ear off about it. But if you don't, it's your job. You know, like, I think that we always want people to get us, to see us, to, to align with what we have to say, but how can we give that gift to other people? You know, what if somebody doesn't align with what we say? give the gift to them and say, okay, I understand you don't like what I, what I'm talking about. That's your prerogative, you know, always having the duality to understand that 
because someone doesn't, you know, thinks that what you do is dumb. That's not offensive. It isn't. It, it is. It is just their opinion. It is their perspective. It is a and, and I'm always a believer in parallel opinions. Nobody wins when you're having a battle of wills or a battle of opinions. There's no winner because no opinion is true. It's just an opinion. There's nothing that is is true about an opinion. There's only facts. Like a fact is this, or and you can't dispute it because if it is a fact, if we know, for instance, that the sky, the the sun is a, a hot burning ball of gas. Okay, that's kind of a fact. Well, we'll say it's close to. We we'll get the closest. We nobody's been up there, but I'm I'm assuming it's a fact. Um, and so we can't dispute that, but we can always dispute opinions. And so, like, I'm really open, and I like to hear other people's perspective of. Um, why they think it's junk or why they think it's if they want to tell me and if they don't want to tell me that's fine too um, but I never take offense to people who don't don't like my work I, I, I'm okay with it every once in a while somebody will give me a, a, a they'll give me a, um, a, a bit of a trigger o occasionally but it's not usually the case but it's usually something that um, will be derogatory in a way where it feels um, it feels wrong because it's almost like it's um, penalizing other people as opposed to, you know, the work. Like anybody who believes this stuff is crap, is full of crap. Then I get that bothers me because it's not about me anymore. It's about, you know, more people than me. And then that's where I kind of feel like a little bit more protective of, awesome. of other people, because I just think that if you are trying to embrace something new and people aren't supporting you, then then I feel like that's that's hard enough as it is. And to have other people coming in and chiming in, it just makes it even worse. And so again, that's me wanting to be protective. And, you know, the biggest thing that I do with my channel that I think is really important for my perspective is to break the barriers and it is to not have people have to pay to get the information, you know, um, which is good, you know, in a lot of ways. But having said that, sometimes people don't respect your work because they they think, oh, I'm getting for free. It's not real good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's another perspective. But having said that, um, I'm going to continue to to try and give that to people as much as I can, because I think that it is so important. And that that is the bottom line is if you can get, you know, and it is one person at a time, if one person can sort of find that place in themselves where they feel like they can grow and be a better version of who they are or they feel like they can just be who they are then that is is worth it because when they do that they're going to spread that energy off to somebody else it, it also ultimately it is like one small step becomes even bigger and grows and grows the more people that kind of connect with it but so so those are just some ideas it feels very um pluto and aquarius to me, like looping back around to that, as far as kind of unleashing the individuality of every single human being for the greater good. And yeah. I would be protective too, if people showed up and like are harassing people who are trying to do their soul's work, like, dude, get the hell out of here. But I can't help but make the connection since we just talked about it as far as like, is that harm that like if they're in that situation of I'm trying to embrace something new and now here's a heckler or whatever, like, is that part of the harm that their soul is like, okay, like this is what we're doing today. We're going to get, you know, sideswiped on our ego by this person who's calling our beliefs stupid. Like, is that, yes. and is it a way for them to grow? Yeah. 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 And, and am I controlling their growth? Yes. See, I told you it still comes out. God damn it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You I'll know what I mean? It still yeah. comes out. Right. Yeah. So, so ultimately, you know, and then you, you can have those moments, like you just did of clarity where you step back and go, do they need to have that, that thing? And I, and I think that, yes, I think there are moments where, um, people need to work with that. But then I think there are moments where we, that I, we have to step in, I think, you know, um, anything that gets beyond just words in, or anything physical. I mean, to me that, that for me, if I see something physically happening, um, I don't know, there's, there's these things that you have that impact you. And I remember a long, long time ago, I was a teenager and I, and I went out to a restaurant with my mom and we were just sitting there and there was this um, family beside us and there was a little, little boy and he was about three 
and um and he he wanted to have fries or something and i think he grabbed a fry from the box of fries and and his father just yelled at him and said don't you eat those fries and and i remember it still is something i remember today and i and i think that you know at this age i probably would stand up to that father and say yo you know this is this is a kid they're learning, you know, and, and is that the right way to do it? Probably not. I don't know. Is it going to make the child have more trouble in the end? I don't know. But I think that there are moments in our lives that yes, we need to stand up for other people because that's just, that's just, I feel like human nature, like it's that community thing and that feeling of, okay, you know, um, we all need help sometimes. And there are moments like I, I remember when I, I was two small children, my youngest was, um, uh, he was only eight months old and my other one was only two and a half and I was driving to visit and um, I was on a highway and this was long before they had cell phones and I had a, I had a flat tire and literally on the, on the highway, I was in the flat tire I had no way. There was no cell phone. There was nothing. And so I went outside and I was trying to, and uh, two small children in the car and trying to pump up this tire with this little pump I have in the thing. And this family stopped and helped me and, and put a new tire on, the car and and that kind of thing and yeah that was my journey to have trouble at that moment but it was also a journey to find the humanity and 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 the love of humanity and to see that there are people in the world who are good people who can help us out so 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 there's a balance i think we have to find and where that is you know we'll we'll, we'll intuitively know and i think that's another thing is 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 intuitively knowing what feels correct because if i feel like i'm really triggered it means something because I generally am not. I, I'm pretty calm usually about most things. I don't let things bother me. And if it's bothering me, then it means something more. Is it about my state of mind? If it is, I can I can always uh, you know look at that. But if it isn't, what is it else? What is it? Is it something related to the universal uh, push for me to act in some way or to do something maybe that is impactful or, or helpful in, in some way? And you'll never know really what it is, you know, how, how it could impact somebody else or help somebody else. But if it does, then that's worth it. You know, I just saw like, maybe nobody ever stood up for them. And yeah. then like that, it wasn't just, they needed the harm, but they also needed somebody to like be their advocate and show them that yeah. they're worth standing up for or whatever. Exactly. You know? Like, you exactly. Never know what yeah, it could exactly be the person. yeah but, you don't know there's a balance in everything and and trying to find the the middle way of all things you know and and that's one thing that i i live by too um you know uh, the, many years ago i heard there was like a little uh proverb by it was i think it was by buddha but i don't know um i think it was yes and it just basically was talking about an instrument if this if the string is too tight it will snap and if it's too loose it won't play a beautiful you know um tune but if it's just right it, it it will play a lovely melody and that is what life is about we have to be that that melody as opposed to that too tight snap and the too loose and and you know it's just like a bong you know what i mean it's yeah. there is no real beauty to that sound and um so so it's the middle way so finding the middle way where is that that place and and i think that again into intuition will definitely guide you in in where you need to go and what you need to do and and when you need to act and when you need to stop and especially um with the uh, uh in, integration circuit you know that that definitely gives you that impetus to know when to act and when to if you let it because i mean i think that's like a natural instinct like the the whole and that's going to be as we move into 2027 one of the main factors in um in the global uh, background frequency is um you know this uh, 3420 channel this like extreme busyness so you know that's that's the, that's what we're really seeing happening right now is this moving away from uh, the cross of planning and moving into the cross of the sleeping phoenix and and really you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, are prophesized to happen. We will see how it goes. I mean, we don't know, you know, who really knows until we show up, but it is this idea of um, individuality and um, individuality being so important in our growth as individuals. Because right now, the cross that we're under, the cross of planning 
is really about community and it is about money and 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 um uh, commerce and and a lot of greed and and we see that you know that has really you know it is sort of exploded in a, in a lot of ways and and um the haves and have nots and the you know the the billionaires and the um the way that you know like we could feed the planet you know we could feed feed the planet and yet we don't like everybody in this world could have a, a food food on the table every day you know and they could have a, a shelter to live in and that's not the way it is so it just shows you how we haven't done a really good job but that's okay we're moving into you know a, a new cross and um a new way of being but you know your armor is going to be your individuality your armor is going to be going with your own authority and knowing that you matter just as much as anybody else um there is a lot of busyness as 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 uh, would be considered like going forward and uh but then it also is talking about the solar plexus um uh blooming you could say because right now the solar plexus is not actually a um an awareness center that is really reliable yet the most reliable is our spleen but right now the solar plexus is it's not a hundred percent we could say as we move forward that is something that is, a, is said to um expand in that it, it will um increase our level of spirit or our spirit which is through human design lens is our spirit of who we are sharing who we are with with other people and i think that the more you sort of embrace that and and see that that is the path forward then the more you can be really comfortable in your own skin and and to thrive as we move into the new world because we know that like globally if we just look around the world everything's changing I mean, I just read an article today that in 2027, the the global uh, temperature is going to go up by 1.5 degrees, which is considered not not amazing. So this is where we are. And how do we mitigate that? Well, you can only just try and um, do your best. And I think the really coolest thing about human design is that the body graph for human design is, um, if I remember correctly, it has the uh, channel of perfected design, which is a channel of survival of the individual. And I thought that's really cool. So is this information, the survival of the individual? And, and, you know, that's a question. It is a profound question and it's an interesting question and it's a question without answer, but having okay. said that it is a cool question. Yeah, I do. I could definitely see that, that like maybe not human design exactly, but like all of the esoteric arts, as you put it, absolutely yes that like that is how you ground into this this inner knowing like you need those outer pieces of information telling you yes do it do it like that like listen to yourself that's okay yeah. because yeah. culture is often not affirming that for us they're the ones telling us like no 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 like it should be like this and you should do it like this or that this step and then this step and it's like God, yeah like yeah. They're all tools. They're all tools. If yeah. you use tarot, if you use um, I Ching, if you whatever you use to make you feel empowered. So you kind of have some idea of what you're going to meet in the world, like not necessarily everything. Well, that's what what we need. And so, yeah, for me, it's human design. I love astrology, too. But I, I I'm I'm interested in everything. I mean, I, I mean, my journey began with angels. Uh, Doreen Virtue was somebody who I was like, wow, she's so, you know, like I loved her books and everything. Well, that all changed considerably. But having said that, she was the beginning for me. Um, uh, but then she disavowed all her her old work and everything. So now she's um, she's a Christian who says it's all uh, not good work. But that's, you know, that's her journey. Um, yeah, yeah. She had, uh, I, I, I looked at her chart and I thought it was really interesting because she had a nodal return where so she has the nodes completely opposite to mine, the three and the 50. So when you think about it is I started out with a 50, which was traditional, traditional spirituality, traditional religion. I was brought up uh, Roman Catholic, all that stuff. Right. And then you move to the, 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 uh, the Uranus opposition, and then you get into this spiritual thing where it's more disjointed and it's not as, I guess you would say uh, tribal because tribal is very um 
it's very rigid and you have certain rules and regulations and you have to follow them. And whereas if you look at the gate three, it's difficult in the beginning, but it is like expansive and mutative and different, like nothing has ever been done before. So she went from the expansive mutative and different from nothing has been done before, did all this angel work and, and wrote all these books. I, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she's got a huge library of, uh, of books about angels she was like the first person that made oracle cards and like a bunch of stuff um she was a, quite a pioneer in her day and now she's worked she's moved back into the very traditional religion of um you know like uh, christianity so when you look at it it's like it like makes a lot of sense um but it was it, it is a really interesting how you see it in her in her sort of um transits body graph whatever but then you also see it um playing out in real life. I love that because to me, that's really cool. So it makes sense. Um, and from that perspective, I mean, I think it gives it some, uh, you know, everybody has a personal journey, so we can't really know what's going on within them, but that was something that she did. And, um, and for me, it was the exact opposite, starting with the sort of more traditional type of uh, spirituality and moving into something less traditional. But again, I am fully open to any kind of divination, esoteric art, anything um, there is no wrong thing out there. And I think that every single tool that we have all give us some information that's very similar. Um, and I love that because in the beginning, I used to do like a little bit more mixing of astrology with human design. And I still do it when I need to, when I feel like I need to, but now I'll listen to an astrology, somebody talking about an astrology and the transits and stuff like that. And I'll go, well, that is so cool. Cause it is so, so much similar to what I literally can see in the human design transits. And to me, that's exciting because it, it really does um, just draw a parallel between all the things that we're doing that all kind of, and, and it just really is like a tool for everybody. Like, what do you align with? Well, I align with tarot. What do you align with? Well, I, I align with crystals, you know, and, and I, or I align with um, aromatherapy or I align with Reiki. I, I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever you align with is right. And, it, it's going to give you that that um, that step forward, but ultimately, if there is one thing that human design can can that talks about, you know, it's this being your own person, and I think that that is the key to all the things. And use any divination, use any tool you want, but just be your own person. Just walk your authentic truth, and and don't care about who likes it or not. You know, if you're not hurting anybody, what is the harm? You know, so that's so much in individuation and authenticity is definitely like that core thread through human design that I really love. And on that note of like all of these different divination tools and like being really authentic with it, um, one of the oracles that I use to like get messages about my life is basically like whatever show I'm drawn to at that time. So like True Blood, for example, I've watched like the oh, I love that. <laughs> True Blood series like 37 times. And every time I do it, there's a new message. There's a new understanding. There's a new like download revelation about life and the nature of reality. Like Criminal Minds, same thing. Dexter, same thing. Like these shows bring information and messages that affirm like what's going on inside of me and inside my intuition and it's weird that they're all like super dark like serial killer shit but you get the messages where they come from you know like the divination tools like it doesn't even have to just be all of the the ones that we think of it can be literally anywhere you're getting information from spirit can use that to like send you yeah. specific messages at a specific time so yeah, I just had to like pop that in there. Oh. Well, and, and and they're not so dark. I mean, I will, I will, I will confess that in um, a couple of years ago, uh, I did, <laughs> I did a study, a human design study on serial killers to see what their crosses were. Um, and there was a, a few, a, a few of them, uh, quite a bit that had the cross of the sleeping phoenix, or they had um the 55 59 um those gates and so i was like wow we have a lot in common <laughs> um <laughs> the 59 it was like uh. but um having said that you know like it's okay to to look outside of yourself but what i find is interesting though um 
is, uh, you know, as, as things happen is you will, you will align with a, a show that you really like, but then sometimes, and I, I think it just happened to me not long ago where there's a show that I was like, everybody was saying it was really good. And I was like, Oh, I should try it out. And it was called, it's called yellow jackets. And uh, it's about these girls that got in a plane crash and I started watching it and I just, I feel so like turned off, but there's like something feels off for me with it. I don't know what it is, but it's the weirdest thing. And I'm going to keep watching to see I only watched like maybe one episode, but I just, I just don't feel it. Oh my God. I just okay. don't feel like there's, you're going to have to tell me what it is. Like, what is the, the, the turnoff? Because I it's it's so creepy the show yeah. itself and it's like like I said I, watched, I like creepy though I like creepy too. I love it it's creepy in a different way and it gets to one particular point and I'm not going to spoiler for it because I really want to hear like what is your take if you do watch it but mm -hmm. yeah the there gets to be this one piece in the storyline that just like no no, this, this isn't good. This isn't right. And actually it's just syncing up for me. That's so interesting. I'm rewatching true blood and I'm on season two where like the main ad or whatever, she like makes people go like drunk with gluttony or lust or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And they eat dirt. And this is like this, this like excessive, like loss to ourselves, like all, all limits are gone and you're just like in the abyss. And like, mm -hmm. what's possible in the abyss? And like, I think Yellow Jackets came out of that place, basically. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's got a vibe that's like real freaking dark. And I don't know. It, darker it, than dark. It's just, yeah. And, you know, like I have watched, you know, I, I'm not a stranger to anything like that. I mean, those kind of, I love True Blood. I mean, that, that was an amazing show. Um, I haven't watched it in years, so I've forgotten a lot of it. But uh, I mean, definitely, I was every week back in the day when they didn't yeah. have Netflix. Um, I I was on, you know, watching it. Um, and horrors were my like ultimate favorite. Like uh, Stephen King was he was my he was my um, main book that I used to read when I was a, a kid. Right, yeah. I love all his work. But the Yellow Jackets, I don't know. It's just there's something that feels wrong. I don't, I can't explain it. Yeah. And it, and of course it's just could be a personal thing for me because I know a lot of people say it's great mm -hmm. and there's been so many commercials about it and it's so great and la 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 what, but it's just, I don't know. It, maybe I'll get through it and maybe it's just like that sort of moment. But having said that, I am feeling like way more intensely, um, not in a negative way, but I think I, when I do get into shows now, when I, I have the full channel, like in transit, the 35, 36, when I do get into things now, I am like, so in, like, I forget the world around me and I've never been that immersed in, mm -hmm. in, in anything. And that's kind of how I watch shows now, which I'm really in there. So maybe it is, it's so in, intense that I'm in there so deeply that maybe it, that's what it is. I don't know. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just odd, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. I don't know until I know. And when I know, well, I will, I will let you know, but you know. at this point I'm just kind of there. So you, have you watched the both seasons of it? I have not watched the second season, although now I really am like activated to go watch it. I didn't realize the second one was already out. I have watched the full first season and like I said like at the end of the first season I was just sitting there like what the, like what yeah is this and it it exists on a frequency that like none of this other stuff is there and mm -hmm. it's it is different I don't know maybe it goes back to that like solar plexus not being like a fully formed awareness center but there's something that my gut is picking up that says like it's almost like a I do not use this word lightly. I hardly ever say this word actually, but like demonic, I don't even know if I believe in it. Oh, oh, but like, yeah. it maybe that's it. Black magic vibes. Kind yeah. of. And again, I don't even know if I believe in black magic, but like if I did, this would be, I'd point right there and be like, that's what. That yeah. Is. Yeah. And that's only happened to me with another show. One more show mm. that actually I felt like um, I wasn't meant to watch. It oh. was, um, I don't know, it could have been psychic hunters or there was something ghost hunters or something really 
um like that and i mean i thought it was a great show and i recorded a bunch of uh the videos um on my pvr and uh they all got deleted and then i i tried to re-record it and then i remember some weird stuff was happening i was like there's something that's saying i should not be watching this show i don't know why but it is not for me and so i was like okay i'm not going to watch it and i didn't and um and this feels very similar to that. And I don't know why I, I don't have an explanation other than it's just a, well, it's an inner knowing. It's just that, that intuition that just feels like there's a barrier that says, okay, you're not supposed to be in here. Yeah. And I don't know why it, and, and when you say those words, it kind of says, yeah, I think you're, I think you, you, you got that. I think you hit it on the, yeah. on the nail. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where, again, I watch all this creepy stuff. And the thought of it being real is like, okay, maybe it's real. Maybe it's not real. Like vampires, witches, like none of that bothers me. This show, if it's real, what they're portraying, which like, again, there's enough of me that's like, I think it is. I don't know. Like, it just like, it's too scary to even contemplate that like, that's, that's a real thing that could actually happen. Like, I don't like this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and and you look at the it was, I mean, it, it was, I I look at it like the Lord of the Flies, like a a, a extreme version of Lord of the Flies, Very much and that. then you also have the actual true story of those. Uh, I think uh, I don't know if it's soccer players or rugby players that were in a plane crash who had to, um, do extreme measures to survive. Uh, that happened in the seventies. Yeah, uh, I looked it up because I had heard about there was some sort of a plane crash. So so anyhow um yeah we're, we're we, it was lots to think about in that but that was that was one of those um uh, weird moments where uh, I just felt like yeah that's not not that's not something I'm interested in but I, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and just to see if it was just maybe it was just the day or something mm -hmm. and you know I was just not yeah. feeling it all of this because you can get oracle messages freaking anywhere from tv shows exactly. or like whatever music anything absolutely Oh my gosh. I love that we got to go there. I, I could talk to you for a long time. All of our Gemini energy combined, I'm sure we could carry this on forever. Um, but I do want to be respectful of your time. And you've been so gracious to share so many awesome stories with us and little nick like nibbles and nuggets and all the things that I'm gonna have to go back and like catch it and take notes on it. Um, before we go, is there anything you want to share with those watching as far as where to find you or where to find your work? Anything at all? I think, I think the, the most, um, the most you'll find me is on YouTube and that will be in the community page. Like I, I, I am there every day. Well, I'm, I'm uh, writing a daily post, so, um, I'm connecting with everybody every day. And also I do do videos on YouTube, just talking about the the moons and those types of things. And um, I do have a uh, website, denisematthew.com. And basically, if you want to check that out, there's some freebies that anybody who uh, wants to pick them up, they can get just some information about more about the aura types and, and that type of thing. So anything that they want to get there, they can. And uh, hopefully in the future, I will have more content to, uh, to uh, give to people as we move forward. Thank you so much for everything that you already do have on your channel. Just like you were saying about, um, is it Karen Curry Parker? Is that, how you, is mm -hmm. that her name? Yeah. You were my introduction. So like when I cool. first pulled my human design chart and like all the things, I'm like, what am I even looking at? Your channel went through like, what does it mean about split definition? What are, what's an emotional wave and which kind of emotional wave do you have? And I like, I watched all the videos and it was like a free course on human design through your channel. I felt like it was such a, an abundant, I remember it was like 10 hours one Saturday. I sat there and like watched like all the things. Um, so thank you for everything that's already there and anything that you're inspired to put out in the future, I'm sure will be great as well. So yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you for letting me be here and, and chit chat and tell you a lots of stuff about myself, which normally I don't do. It was kind of interesting, but I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. <laughs>